Good afternoon. So I'm here today to talk to you about some of the work that my colleagues and I are doing in education uh, using socially immersive media. Uh, these are virtual worlds, simulations, games, and augmented reality. Uh, some of the most exciting uh, work uh, and projects are going on right here in South Carolina. So in a couple of minutes, we're going to look at a few examples of those. But first, I'm going to give you just a little bit of, of background, if I may. So, so I'm really interested in uh, 21st century pedagogies and really across the uh, spectrum, the professional spectrum. But I've, I've worked most closely uh, with teachers and helping them develop the skill sets and understandings that they need to be able to connect with the students that they are finding in their, in their classrooms today. Uh, so some of these examples uh, will be from, from teaching, uh, we'll also have some from nursing and engineering, but they really represent uh, a good cross-section of some of the really successful projects. So we live today in a mediated world. We are surrounded by data and relationships, swimming in a sea of uber connectivity. <laughs> For some of us, this can be a bit disconcerting and feel a little unnatural. There's a word for folks like us. Mark Prensky calls us digital immigrants. So there's another guy named Alan Kay who has the best definition of technology I've ever heard. And his definition of technology is anything that was invented after you were born. <laughs> Everything else, right? Everything else is natural, right? <laughs> So for those of us who are digital immigrants, uh, things like being social have traditionally meant being in the same place physically. Right? And what we think we all know, uh, we likely learned mostly from books and the other printed media that we've read, and from what our teachers taught us in the classrooms and schools to which we were assigned. But there is a new generation among us. They're called digital natives. <laughs> They're born into a world where malleable identities and mediated connections with others and experiences just are. <laughs> They're born into a world where 24-7, high-speed, ubiquitous access to all things and all people isn't necessarily the result of technology, but rather is simply a component of their naturally occurring world. So as a result, they think, uh, well, they think a little differently than we. <laughs> they don't necessarily look at the identities that they forge using social and immersive media as mirrors of themselves, but rather as integrated expressions of immediacy and an extended identity bandwidth, if you will, that results when we merge our corporal selves with our digital ones. So this blended, mediated sense of place and self <laughs> and task and group is opening up new worlds for learning that we're tapping into. So today, there are over, well over one billion registered avatars or digital representations of ourselves across dozens of virtual worlds. And the vast majority of these digital citizens are kids. So by combining avatars and persistent spaces, and social constructivist methods with serendipitous opportunities for multimodal communication, virtual worlds and other social immersive media are allowing us to be together apart in ways never before possible. So we're, cr we're crafting new ways to teach as a result. So if pedagogy is the art and science of teaching kids, and andragogy is the art and science of teaching adults, then perhaps the kinds of things that uh, we're doing right here in South Carolina are laying the foundation for a new art and science of teaching, an emerging avagogy, if you will. And it's really challenging us to think about the new affordances to education that these media provide, and how we have to rethink, we have to rethink what we look at as good teaching and learning. So we're going to queue up a couple of videos here and just show you uh, some clips of examples of work that folks are doing. The first one is going to be the work of some faculty at USC Upstate, right here up the street, in the School of Nursing. So they're using a virtual world platform called Second Life, 
uh, to create a virtual clinic. Now they take their, uh, their, their pre-service nursing students, if you will, and are teaching them these protocols that they would normally have taught traditionally using textbooks. Things like how do you enter a patient's room uh, and how do, how do you dispense oral medication. Uh, very core concepts that they can now, instead of just reading from a list in a book, can actually come into the space and practice. And so we have, uh, we have animated patients, and if you walk into the, the room and you don't wash your hands or you don't introduce yourself, then the patient is going to react and say, hey, who are you? What are you doing in my room? And you're not going to touch me with those hands, are you? <laughs> right? And students can then be kicked back into a library uh, that has digital remediation materials to allow them to refresh the protocol and steps and then get right back in here and do it again. All right? Uh, so that's, that's one example. All right, great. So this, this, is, uh, this is a work, another uh, USC Upstate faculty member who's working with a community group called First Steps uh, here in South Carolina uh, that provides training to pre uh, preschools. Uh, now one of their challenges is getting the training out to all these uh, preschools in uh, sort of the nooks and crannies of the state. So they're using a technology called Jibe uh, to create a virtual space where you can come in, and this is an embedded multimedia presentation on the proper way to wash your hands. Uh, so you can come in, you can listen to the instructions, you can watch the slides, uh, and then I think we'll turn here in a second. Uh, to the left, uh, there's a game that you can play. Uh, it's sort of a, a matching card game uh, to, help, to help you uh, make sure that you got the right steps in the right way. Uh, and this is another example of being able to provide learning opportunities to folks who otherwise wouldn't have them, right? So there, there's, there's the there's the game at station two. Uh, now, folks can come from two different preschools on two opposite sides of state and share that training together. This is an, a really neat one too. All right, so this is a teaching simulator called Teach Live, developed by the University of Central Florida, but being used right here in Greenville uh, by Leanne Medford from Clemson University. So here's how this works. Uh, the person you see on the right is wearing a motion track uh, marker, and she's teaching this class, and they're talking back to her. And as she moves around her physical space, her character moves around the virtual space. So you can practice proximity, leaning down, standing up. Each of these characters has a programmed behavior that uh, you can control to make them more agitated or less agitated. But there's also somebody watching her as she interacts with the teachers, who can take over any one of those characters at any time and play them in situ. So the result is kind of like a flight simulator for teachers, and you never know whether you're talking to a programmed agent or more like an avatar or, or, or a puppet. And it makes for a very immersive space where teachers can practice things that they couldn't do otherwise without putting real kids, for example, at risk. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> What do we got here? All right, this is another neat one. Okay, so this is uh, also using Jibe, and this is the work of Tim Ellis uh, from USC Upstate, who is in the engineering technology uh, management uh, program there, and he has built a simulated potato chip factory. So now his students can come into the factory and go to each of the manufacturing uh, processes and manipulate the uh, simulation take the data that's being spit out from it, pull it back into their uh, classroom labs, put in the Excel, Excel spreadsheets, uh, and, and go through it that way. Uh, so this gives them, uh, again, a practical, uh, hands-on kind of way to experience the, the, the process together, uh, but also in a way that would be too expensive or too dangerous or just simply unavailable otherwise. Uh, and this is one of the real values of, of simulations uh, just in general. So this last one is uh, a little different. Uh, this is actually coming uh, from uh, the Instructional Technology Group at Appalachian State University, right up the road here a bit. Uh, and they're using something called Teleplace. Uh, now, one of the things you'll notice here is that you can have uh, sort of a, a humanoid uh, looking avatar of this, but uh, the, the preferred mode in this space is simply a colored box. Uh, so they've really taken kind of the identity side out of it uh, in time, uh, and replaced it with a very functional, practical way. 
So these are just some examples of some of the things that are going on uh, here locally uh, that are really having success. But of course, it's not about the media itself. Uh, it's about how it, uh, how it engages our senses of what it means to be a human together today. So at my group, Learn and See, at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, uh, we're leveraging these technologies to make education uh, more accessible, uh, more effective, and more efficient uh, across the state and beyond. And we're proud to do so in partnership with, with plenty of others. Uh, but for example, we have a new partnership with a virtual world uh, platform and development company called Reaction Grid, uh, where we're working together to create virtual worlds that are open source and free that we can distribute to kids, teachers, and, and schools uh, so they can create their own virtual worlds and take them wherever they go. So as a well-known philosopher once said, all beings so far have created something beyond themselves. Social immersive media are allowing us to connect folks with learning uh, questions, uh, with expertise and talent that have answers in ways never before possible and disregarding, in many ways, the space between us and reconnecting us to help today's learners and tomorrow's learners be as effective and uh, create and lead in the media world in which they find themselves. So thanks so much for your time today. <laughs>